acne. This is also something we see very, very commonly in dermatology. This is what I'm presenting to you this evening. It's things that we see, what happens in a day in, in our office? What do we see and what we can do to help you and people in our community? So there are topicals, there are oral antibiotics. Um, we have our esthetician that we synergize with because they have a whole other body of knowledge. It's very practical, very simple. We carry different wholesome lines with glycolic acids that help the skin, peel the skin, get rid of all these blackheads, all these pustules, get rid of all this inflammation. There's a new one that's out um, that is just mainly focused not on the blackhead part, but on the pus component. It's called Axone, like acne zone. Get, get rid of acne in this zone. Um, and we're just starting to work with that. Also very few side effects and uh, no dryness, no, no irritability, kind of like with Differin or Retin-A, if you guys have heard of Retin-A or Tretinoin, really dries out your skin, whereas this one just gets to those pustules, gets to those neutrophils and wipes them out without too much irritation. Accutane, we're a big, big Accutane clinic. Accutane is a vitamin A derivative. Our main concern is uh, making sure our young ladies don't get pregnant on it because it can be very damaging to a baby that is forming. So we have to have our, our ladies of, uh, of uh, childbearing age uh, on two kinds of birth control before we start this. Uh, it's meant for the large nodular cystic kind of acne, painful kind of acne. Or sometimes it's not in large nodules and cysts, it's just all over the back. And how are you going to practically smear creams and gels all over your back two, three times a day? Mm -hmm. You're going to go through a tube a week, and it's, it's also very expensive to go through that, that much medication. So you have to do something orally. So it's one pill. You take it for five to six months. I usually lower the dose a little bit so there's less side effects of the dryness, dry cracked lips and eczema and stuff like that, which is the main side effect. That also has some liver toxicity. So we check your blood here in the office. We have a special machine so you don't have to go to the little lab and wait and all that kind of stuff. We have the machine here in the office. We poke your finger and we check your, your liver test and off you go with your prescription. Any questions? Is it safe for like teenagers, the Accutane? Oh, it's, those are, that's the highest clientele that uses it. Highest using clientele is teenagers. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's been about six million users have used it thus far. Mm -hmm. So there are many side effects. There's side effects of depression, elation, the whole laundry list of side effects. I can't say it's side effect free. There are definitely side effects. You know, really dry skin. Some people are in sports and all that kind of stuff. They get more chafing. Um, we have to tell women not to get their brows waxed or tweezed because it'll just tear off the skin because the skin is so peely and so sensitive while you're on it. you got to be careful with the sun, get a sunburn more easily. So there are a lot of side effects, but it works great. And as long as you control the side effects, moisturize the skin, don't, don't get your brows waxed for six months. You know, you can tweeze instead individually instead of tearing the skin along with it. As long as you modulate the side effects and you educate the patients, they're aware, it's really a great drug. It's really a great drug. I mean, I've seen people with such a low self-esteem, teenagers that are just really struggling with their acne, and then six months later, it just happened today. A uh, lady came in and said, you know, she came in because her son had come in for the acne change. She said, it's a different person. He's a different person. He has a different kind of job. His self-esteem is totally changed. He got married. He has a child now, two months old. So it's, it's really revolutionary. That's why I really, really believe in it. It's expensive, uh, but there are generics out there now, so it's made it more affordable. Rosacea is also a common one that we see, and I'm sure everybody has heard of. There's a lot of uh, publicity on this. It's in the ladies' journals, and we try to find things that will cover up all the redness. Um, basically, we start with topicals like Metrogel, which is metronidazole, in a gel or a cream form. Uh, if that doesn't work, we move to orals, and oral antibiotics work. I know a lot of people don't want to use antibiotics, but the ones that we use for this are really just low-dose anti-inflammatory antibiotics. It's not going to make you resistant to anything else because the antibiotics that we use here, everything is already resistant to. You know, the, the MRSA that's out there, the MRSA, the community acquired, or the hospital acquired, don't react to this anyways. So you can be on for months and months to years and years. Eventually we taper off and it, it can get control of it and you can just stick with topicals. Um, intense pulse light is that photofacial that Michelle was talking about um, and other la lasers that we have. We have five different lasers. We don't, we're not a clinic that has the one laser does it all because one laser does not do it all. You have to have different lasers for different indications. 
That's where you go to the South Center and all those salons that were opening and closing and opening and closing um, because of that one laser that they had that burned. Claimed they could treat a tattoo and take the redness out of your face and take the pigment sunspots off your hands. It doesn't work that way. Each laser has its own wavelength, its own capacity. So we have these specific lasers that'll take away the redness out of the skin and the little veins. And, you'll, and we'll see pictures of this later on when we're talking about the lasers. And they're definitely food, spicy foods, good Mexican foods, all those jalapenos that'll make this worse. So we give a list, we'll give a brochure that'll explain what foods you can eat, cannot eat, patients with rosacea. <clears throat> Any questions? What's the, what are some of the causes of rosacea? Is it hereditary? We, yeah, there's definitely a hereditary component. We definitely see it in mothers and daughters, fathers and sons. Uh, we don't know what causes it. We think that there's something in the GI tract, something in our intestines, something internally that's not working well. Some people, some people call it the leaky gut syndrome. <laughs> where uh, where something something is not something is permeating out and it's sending a toxin into your skin and it's breaking out, causing mm -hmm. it to break out. Because what we do is when we treat with antibiotics and you treat H. pylori and you treat these things that go into your intestines and it calms that bacteria down that naturally is in our intestines, mm -hmm. and the rosacea goes away. Oh, okay. There's definitely so something in the link. Spicy foods. Yeah, spicy. Mm -hmm. That's why spicy foods will exacerbate. Actually, what's interesting is like there's a patient that couldn't afford their psoriasis treatment, right? So uh, we know that those jalapenos contain a um, chemical, a product that actually helps psoriasis. So we just don't eat a lot of spicy salsa. So it's good for psoriasis, but it's not great for your rosacea. <laughs> <laughs> or your diet sometimes. <laughs> or your diet sometimes.